Hello, potential or prospective band guitar player. Uh, this is a video to kind of just talk about some of the, uh, the types of band guitars that are out there, uh, some of the ways you can string them up and arrange them and set them up to get different kinds of sounds. Uh, a lot of times you'll see videos out there by folks that will demonstrate them and uh, play a tune for you or something. But you don't get to hear much of a comparison, and uh, I'm fortunate enough that I've got three band guitars, and they're all slightly different uh, designs, and uh, I keep them strung up differently so I can get different sounds out of them. So maybe it'll just give you some ideas uh, if you're, there's a particular thing that you're looking for that you're trying to shop for. I did write a blog post on this on the banjotars.com blog. But if you, uh, as you read that, you'll get a lot of information, but you can't hear anything, obviously. So I figured I would go ahead and just maybe make a, sh a, a short video and uh, share some things with you. Uh, the band guitars I've got, none of them are particularly hugely expensive. Uh, you'll find that in instruments, and this is the same, this applies for guitars as well. Almost any guitar under a thousand dollars, maybe even as, as much as fifteen hundred dollars, uh, is made in a factory in Asia somewhere. Uh, Asia cranks out so many different guitars model and they do uh, OEM manufacturing which is called, called equi original equipment manufacturing for different manufacturers. If you go buy like an Epiphone guitar for example it's made in the same chi China factory as like Samick, as uh, uh, Washburn, as, uh, basically any brand of instrument that you're going to find under thousand dollars is probably made in the same factory. They just put different headstock on it, different logo on it, and it doesn't mean that's that it's a bad instrument. Uh, most of these instruments are made using uh, computer guided uh, machinery now, so the carving, the routing, all the stuff that's done is done with extraordinary accuracy, much greater than what a human craftsman could do. Uh, so the cutting, the placement of the frets, all these different kind of things are uh, are very very accurate whereas like when I was uh, growing up if you bought a hundred dollar guitar uh, you didn't know what you were getting uh, things would the, the frets would be out of place or they wouldn't be properly finished or the the neck would be out of alignment you don't run into that any anymore because the quality of inexpensive guitars has gone up so much higher because of the the computer technology that's used to make them now, if you're really looking, if you're an accomplished player and you're looking for something that's going to be a, an heirloom and you're going to play it for the rest of your life and you're going to pass it down to your grandchildren, well, then go spend the, the $2,000 to get you the, uh, the, the deering or something like that. I would love to have one of those one day, but uh, at, at my age, it's not worth uh, uh, go, going to, to get one. If deering ever wants to have a, 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 a spon to sponsor me, hey, great, I'll take one. But... Uh, the instrument I'm holding right now, this is one uh, I got for Christmas for my wife. She bought it off of eBay. So it, it, it is a very pleasant to play instrument. Sounds good. It's fun to play. Uh, I did have to do some setup work to it. <clears throat> what I mean by setup work, if you're not familiar with this, and you have to do this with inexpensive guitars as well, it's basically you need to set up the height of the bridge in relation to, uh, so that the strings won't be too high up off the neck. Uh, the, on a banjo, that's very easy to adjust. <clears throat> Inside the, the banjo, when you take this little uh, uh, resonator off the back of it, there's a rod or sometimes two rods inside there called coordinator rods and you can adjust those and it's much easier to adjust than a guitar. Uh, that's because I think banjos are kind of like machined more so than they are uh, made the way guitars are where everything is glued together. This is kind of held together with nuts and bolts like a machine and so it's very easy to adjust the, the, the height of the neck in relation to the strings. Uh, with one of those. Uh, you can also tighten the truss rod. That's something that you want to do when you get one. Uh, basically, the, when you look at uh, an inexpensive instrument, where does the manufacturer save the cost? They save that cost in labor. The materials between a $1,000 guitar and a $200 guitar are really very minimal. They, they're pieces of wood. Uh, that's not One piece of wood is not hugely different than another piece of wood. However, the way it's put together is. And usually in the final part of, the, of a manufacturer of a guitar or a banjo or other string instrument is right when it, before it goes out of the factory, it goes through 
a setup. A technician will sit there, he'll, he'll file and dress the frets. He will make sure that everything there is even for proper height, that the frets are crowned very precisely. He will set the action of the instrument, intonate the bridge, uh, adjust and tighten the tuning machines, all this final setup stuff. And it may take an hour or two depending on how much work they're going to put into it. Uh, for a, a very expensive guitar, it may take several hours for them to put those fine tuning things onto them to make them just exactly perfect. If you're buying like a Taylor guitar or a Martin guitar, it's gone through hours of setup and they're perfect when you get them. Uh, most inexpensive guitars, they, they don't know whether they're gonna, when they sell, sell that from the factory, they don't know if it's gonna go to a retailer in Minnesota, in Nevada, if it's, or in Florida, where the climates are drastically different. And so they set the action intentionally high so it doesn't buzz when it's sitting there on the store shelves. So the instrument is pretty, the strings are going to be higher off the neck than what you may be comfortable with. All of that is adjustable on guitars and band guitars. And it's very easy on band guitar to do that. So on this guitar, uh, these retail for around a little over a hundred bucks on, on eBay. Uh, and a lot of that will include free shipping as well. So when you get the band guitar, uh, you're going to have to do some setup stuff. You're going to have to adjust the neck. You're going to tighten the truss rod, uh, tune the, the banjo head, which are, there are these little uh, brackets all around here that you tension the head with. None of that stuff is going to be done. When you buy one, then it's going to cost you a hundred bucks. But you can get something that's going to sound really good once you do all the adjustments. <laughs> This particular band guitar, I love the sound. It just it's kind of goes straight to the heart. I keep up usually just because I'm playing by myself. Now, if I'm playing with a recording or something, I, I will uh, adjust as necessary. But just the sound of this instrument, you capo up, just goes right to the heart. for a perfectly nice band guitar. And like I said, I've done a little bit of customization to it and uh, it plays great, it sounds wonderful. I really enjoy playing it. This is my standard tuning band guitar. So it's tuned exactly like a guitar with the low strings on it. I'm gonna show you one in just a minute that is uh, a little bit different. This one is an open back band guitar, no resonator on the back. Uh, the open uh, back design uh, just kind of reflects most of the sound back into your body. As a result, it's a bit quieter. Uh, if you're practicing at home and you want something that's going to not kind of penetrate through the walls and, you know, hear two apartments down <laughs> from you, uh, this might be a good choice for you. Uh, the, the open back band guitar is lighter. Uh, it's easy if you're going to take it somewhere with you, go to a festival, go to a park, go camping, uh, take one with you hiking. Uh, it's a whole lot lighter than uh, a regular uh, band guitar or regular banjo for that, that matter. Uh, this one, uh, the same things apply to it. When you get one, you probably have to do some setup work on it. This one is a Korea banjo. These are made by, a, well, they're, they're also made in China, but they're sold by a company in uh, Australia. And I ordered this one off of eBay a few months ago, well, about a year ago, I suppose now. And uh, it plays great, sounds great. This one, uh, I keep, like the last one I just showed you, that one is strung up with an electric guitar set, uh, a Ernie Ball set 9 to 42, just a standard electric guitar uh, gauge. You'll find that the lighter the strings, uh, the more the, ban the banjo or the banjo guitar rings, whereas when you buy them from the factory, they usually have them with a standard light gauge acoustic guitar string on there and they don't sound nearly as good. If you put a set of really light strings on there, they ring a whole lot more. The sound uh, just it has more sustain and it's a better tone altogether. Now on this particular banjo, I keep this one tuned to open A tuning. Uh, most regular banjos are tuned to open G and they have a five string banjo has that high G, that old half string up on the top. Uh, an open G on guitar, you have a low G and a low D string, which gives you an extended range. Uh, when you get into uh, band guitars, 
those low strings don't sound quite as nice as what they do on the guitar. That deep bass tone just doesn't, it just kind of goes plonk, plonk, plonk. And so it, it, it doesn't sound quite as good. So by tuning this one up to, I went to the open G because I'm very familiar with that. I've played that tuning for many years on the guitar. And uh, when I played on, on the banjo, it just seemed a little floppy. So what I did is uh, I tuned it up a whole step. And this is also a set of Ernie Ball 942, uh, uh, you know, your regular slinky light gauge for electric guitar. And uh, So it's a great sound. Uh, it's a very different sound. Uh, Price-wise, open back, probably the same. There's really not that much difference between the uh, the resonator ones and the open back ones. Uh, not until you get to a much higher level. Uh, this one sold for, I think, because of the, the exchange rate between the Australian dollar and the American dollar. This one was about 229 or something like that. And then the shipping was probably another... 60, 70 bucks to get it here from Australia. So it was uh, under 300 bucks and it's a great sounding instrument, very banjo-y sounding, it has a great ring to it and I uh, really love playing this one a lot. Uh, this one has a radius fretboard. In other words, like a guitar, the frets on the guitars are curved on a steel string guitar, uh, whereas on a classical guitar, they're flat. The last banjo I just showed you has a flat fingerboard radius. Uh, this one has a curved radius, so it feels a little more guitar-like and has a little bit slimmer neck. Uh, as a result. So uh, that's the, an open back banjo design and this is open A tuning which gives you that real zing which sounds pretty cool. Be back in a second. <laughs> on uh, Shady Grove. This is uh, an SSX banjo. SX. Some people call it Essex, like uh, ESX, E-S-S-E-X. But on the headstock it says SX. These were marketed by Rondo Music here in the U.S. You can't get them anymore. Uh, they are a great banjo if you can find one. Uh, the uh, necks on them are great. This has a flat radius fingerboard. Uh, 26 and a half inch scale like all the other ones I've got here. Has a resonator on the back and the wood is beautiful on it. Uh, this uh, banjo, the distinguishing feature is the uh, what's called the pot. Uh, most of your banjos have a pot or which is basically the rim and there's a flange that goes around it that holds the head on. This one, the pot and the and the flange are all one piece of cast aluminum. So this banjo is quite a bit louder than the other two, which are basically solid wood or laminated wood uh, rims. Uh, the, uh, the weight on this one is significantly heavier. If you pick up a regular banjo, like a Gibson or you know a, a really nice banjo, they're usually quite heavy because of the tone ring. The, uh, the, the aluminum cast uh, flange gives it quite a bit of, of weight and quite a bit of ring and penetrating sound. It's a lot louder than the other ones. Uh, let's see, there are banjos made by Dean, I think, that also have this on there and a couple of other brands. Uh, so you, they're commonly around that you'll see on eBay or other places. The uh, uh, heads on these are all pretty much Remo Weather, Weather, Weather King heads. That's kind of standard on most of these. This one has some inlays in the, in the neck that are kind of pretty cool too and a bound fingerboard. Uh, this, this one probably, uh, like if you could find these anywhere, they're going to go for around 300 bucks or so. So they're not particularly uh, pricey, but they are just really well made. Uh, like all the others, any instrument that's under a thousand bucks, you're probably going to have to do some setup work on it. Uh, this one is very easy to play. 
the unique thing with the sound on this one is uh, I'm using Nashville tuning on this one. Nashville tuning is uh, was a, a tuning invented by uh, session musicians there in Music City where to get an acoustic guitar part to kind of cut through in a track and not get buried. What they do is they kind of, rather than EQ the life out of the thing, what they do is they take a 12 string guitar set and just take the high octave strings of the 12 string and they put it on the guitar. So you end up with the top four strings are an octave higher than usual. And then the bottom two are normal. Well, on the banjo, high kind of chimey quality which you find on a good banjo and so uh, this is just a really great way to kind of get more of a banjo type uh, sound if you're going to fill in and you want more of a bluegrass kind of sound now at the standard tuning you can play in any kind of key uh, I just recently did a recording where I used this banjo and did this big weird chromatic walk down that have all gone from like C to B minor to B flat 6 to uh, a minor ninth to G minor seventh. Uh, it was uh, to do that on a regular banjo would have been almost impossible. At least impossible for me. Maybe Bela Fleck or somebody like that. It's not a problem. Uh, so uh, today we kind of covered three different types of banjos: uh, open back, closed back, uh, wooden rim, uh, metal rim, uh, aluminum rim, uh, radius fingerboard. Uh, flat fingerboards. Uh, I've kind of like the. Uh, I've, I've played both. Uh, the radius fingerboard feels natural to me, having been a guitarist for 40 years. But the flat fingerboard is actually easier for picking because all your strings are on the same plane. They're not curved, so it's easier to pick more intricate things once you get used to it. Uh, this oh, this one is uh, the uh, the Nashville tuning. Uh, the other one was uh, using electric guitar strings uh, using uh, you know an open A tuning. And the, the first one we showed you was a standard tuning, and uh, I like to keep capo that one up just to kind of get that to the heart kind of sound that you get when you have a capoed sound like on a guitar. Um, that's about it. If you have questions or comments, please uh, put them in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe, and I hope you find this helpful. If you're shopping for a banjo guitar and you're looking for different sounds, remember the strings that uh, you put on can make a big difference. The way you set it up uh, can make a big difference. Uh, you can do a lot to these in order to customize your sound. And if you look around the internet at all the different uh, band guitar players there are, you'll see there's a lot of variation and a lot of stylistic. It's an instrument that you can be very creative on. So go ahead and uh, make that leap. Go ahead and buy one. Just find what suits you, suits your ear. Shop around, and thank you for watching. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and punch out now. Thank you for watching. Take care.